shock will be defined in our discussion today as decrease in blood pressure there will be kind of shock where the blood pressure may remain normal the patient is still in shock it's called occult shock or cryptic shock that we will discuss in some other class today for the purpose of our discussion shock is decrease in the mean arterial pressure which you are mostly concerned in our icu patients so map is equal to cardiac output times systemic vascular resistance so this is the formula for mean arterial pressure when mean arterial pressure is down that means either the cardiac output can go down or the systemic vascular resistance can go down by following this equation only if you can reach at a differential diagnosis of shock that will be good for us so let us discuss so cardiac output can be divided as heart rate times stroke volume is not it and stroke volume is dependent upon preload and contractility so there will be situation when the mean atrial pressure is down that means i think the cardiac output is down so when the cardiac output is down it can be down because of the heart rate or because of the stroke volume heart rate can have two kinds of thing right either it can be too fast or it can be too slow right too fast what are the differentials here we have ventricular fibrillation we have ventricular tachycardia we have aaf psbt any kind of tachyarrhythmia can produce a hemodynamically unstable condition too slow what can be the differential diagnosis here complete heart block second degree heart block sick sinus syndrome and etc etc but the treatment here remains electricity so if it is too slow we have to pace the patient if it is too fast we have to shock the patient right now let's say the patient's blood pressure is down but the heart rate is normal so now the next problem can be in the stroke volume and stroke volume problem can be divided into two types either it is a problem with the preload or with the contractility so problem with the preload can be divided into two types again so first will be too hypovolemia and second will be functional hypovolemia So in the true hypovolemia class, we can have two types. For example, number one, we can have hemorrhage, and number two, we can have fluid loss. So here, in the hemorrhage part, we can have GI bleed. We can be hematemesis. or you can have melina or you can have a retro peritoneal bleed or you can have intra peritoneal bleed or you can have hemothorax actually blood loss from the body so what is then functional hypovolemia it can again be divided into two types one is obstructive shock and another is rv failure or this is direct rv failure or this is indirect rv failure so in the obstructive shock we have tamponade we have tension pneumo we have abdominal compartment syndrome we have auto p generation in the rv failure we can have pulmonary embolism or right ventricular myocardial infarction so why both of these are clubbed together under preload because in any of these cases if you give preload in the beginning the bp will go up they will be responsive to fluid so here we have missed one thing so this is the fluid loss the fluid loss can be diarrhea vomiting diuretic 
overuse or diuretic abuse we can have diuretic phase so the diuretic phase can be post atn or post obstruction relief of obstruction right the fluid losses so now next coming to the contractility part we have few causes for example acute coronary syndrome you can have a stemi you can have a nstemi where the cardiac reserve is reduced the ejection fraction is reduced the cardiac output is reduced right you can have congestive heart failure you can have infective endocarditis so the infective endocarditis will produce valvular dysfunction and that can produce a heart failure valvular dysfunction can be mainly acute mr or acute ar right that you can have and secondly you can have myocarditis viral myocarditis is very very common nowadays so now next is we have the systemic vascular resistance part the systemic vascular resistance is actually the after load of the patient so the cardiac output or the stroke volume will face a resistance from the peripheral circulation this is called a systemic vascular resistance so there will be situation when this systemic vascular resistance will be down causing the bp to go down what are the reasons the it will produce a profoundly vasodilated state when the sbr is down that means we have a vasodilated state what are the condition you can have a vasodilated state so in the icu the most common thing that is sepsis is not it then we have second anaphylaxis then we have spinal shock following trauma then we have anesthesia drug related then we have adrenal crisis right so these are the reason why a patient's peripheral resistance will go down so much so that it will produce a profound vasodilation and will decrease the blood pressure so this will also produce a functional hypovolemia even though the volume is there because the capillary is leaky and it has become wider in caliber so the same fluid now it seems like that the patient is have a less fluid so this is also function hypovolemia of preload deficit state and it will also respond to fluid or here also we have another causes for example beta block or toxicity calcium channel block or toxicity etc right those who have a negative anotropic effect on the heart and also we can have sars kind of symptoms for example in burn in acute pancreatitis or in cld or liver failure acute and chronic cld or liver failure in all the situation there will be profound system of dilatation without any infection producing a decrease in sphere decrease in mean blood pressure right so if you follow this equation here we can easily go around this equation and find out what may be the cause in my patient in ic when i am standing in front of the patient right so for example first there can be a tachyarrhythmia there can be bradyarrhythmia producing hemodynamic instability so these things are you can look at the monitor and just diagnose right the hypovolemia part we can have the history of the patient and the history will be suggestive right uh, of course the pulmonary embolism part is diagnosis exclusion but all these things will have a history from the patient for example trauma gi bleed or antiplatelet or anticoagulants right and here fluid loss so will have a will have a history patient is having diarrhea vomiting or patient is having diuretic or patient had recently acute tubular necrosis or there is a prostatic prostatomegaly producing obstruction now you catheterize so there is post obstruction diuresis all these things can produce a decrease in cardiac output because in map obstructive shock this functional hypovolemia why functional the volume remains same inside the body but because of increase in intrathoracic pressure it cannot reach the right side of the heart so this obstructive shock we have tamponade tension pneumothorax abdominal compartment syndrome or otopif of course arrhythmia can be there due to acute pe 
or RB wall mitral infarction. Then you can have a contracted problem which can be produced by the acute coronary syndrome or a congestive heart failure, infant endocarditis, myocarditis, right. The most common cause of shock or decrease in mid-natal pressure in ICU is sepsis which is produced due to decrease in the SBR, right. So, sepsis can be there, anaphylaxis can be there, spinal shock can be there and anaphylaxis will be there, adrenal crisis will be there, beta blocker toxicity, decarcinal blocker toxicity and we can have such symptoms where there is no infection but there is widespread inflammation in acute pancreatitis in the liver failure, CLD burn, right. So, in the next class we will discuss how to cut down on this exhaustive differential diagnosis how to reach at a diagnosis by seeing some basic clinical phenomenon at the bedside of the patient. That we will discuss in the next class. Thank you very much.